Hello everyone, Muckluck Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the Fourth here, and this is a guide on how to get Aurora, one of the two legendary accessories in the game. Aurora comes from doing a collection of Living World Season 3 achievements, so you will need all of Living World Season 3 to get them. The other legendary accessory, Vision, is similarly from Living World Season 4. As with all legendaries, Aurora has the ability to select the stats that are on it and change them anytime you are not in combat. Additionally, unlike most accessories in the game, it has a graphic. The three legendaries, Aurora from Living World Season 3, Vision from Living World Season 4, and Coalescence from Raids form a kind of set graphically. If you have any one of those three items equipped, you will have these above your head when in combat. Any two of those three items equipped look like this, and all three together look like this. Additionally, with the announcement of the Legendary Armory in development, getting a Legendary Ring, Amulet, or Accessory, or Back Item will be great because it will affect all of your characters regardless of what armor or weapon types they use. To be clear, getting a Legendary Medium Armor Helmet for your Engineer would still be awesome, but that's not going to help your Necromancer, who wears Light Armor, where the trinkets affect all characters because they all use them. This legendary can be obtained alone and is quite easy, but takes quite a bit of time. It has achievements and sub-achievements, collections and sub-collections, but you will get many rewards on the way to getting Aurora. I recommend working on a step or two each day until you are finally done, but do whatever works for you. Like most legendaries, we make Aurora by hurling a few choice items into the Mystic Forge. However, there is one item in particular that will be the bulk of your time spent on this project, so let's start with that one. I'm going to tell you now, early, you will need 21 Zun Lai Electrum ingots later on in this project. If you are making them yourself, start now because it has a daily cooldown, or buying them off the trading post is also an option. First off, we need to get a Gleam of Sentience. This is a converter allowing you to trade Imperial Fragments, Bloodstone Dust, and Dragonite Ore for loot and is quite handy to have. To get that, we need four things, and each of them could fill their own guide video, so I'm just going to point you in the right direction and tell you what you need to know. The Sentient Aberration. This is from the Token Collector achievement. Basically, you run around Ember Bay picking up slightly hidden coins. There are videos and guides already out there with all the locations shown. In my opinion, the only difficult to reach one involves doing the Chalice of Tears jumping puzzle. If you aren't confident in getting this one done, I cheesed it when I did it myself by using the prototype position rewinder so that anytime I miss a jump, I can just rewind and do it again. I'll have a link to my guide on that item in the description. Hiring a Mesmer to get through this puzzle is also an option. The second item is a Sentient Anomaly. It is from the Conspiracy of Dunces achievement. You basically find a bunch of books scattered around Bloodstone Fen. Just go pick them up, no big deal. The third item is the Sentient Oddity, which is from the Sin Business achievement, which involves picking up a lot of items scattered around Lake Doric. And lastly is the Sentient Singularity from the Lessons Learned achievement, which involves finding lost recordings scattered around Draconis Mons. There is one that could give you pause, which involves using an Oak Heart's Essence, which is like a grappling hook to reach it. This can be reached with the Oak Heart's Essence Mastery, a Flying Mount, or Teleport to a Friend. Once you have all four sentient items, Mystic Forge them together to make the Gleam of Sentience. An insanely handy item all by itself, but it also will sell you a Sentient Seed, one time only, for 1,000 Unbound Magic. Magic. Once you have it, you will unlock the Aurora Awakening achievement. You can salvage the seed at this point, it'll give you some karma. Now at this point, we need to get six more items, one from each of the Living World Season 3 zones. Once again, each of these could be a video all by itself, but I am going to point you in the right direction instead of giving you 30 extra minutes of detail that I feel isn't necessary. Start with Draconis Mon's hero because it has a time-gated step. 
The Wayfarer's Hinge basically requires doing all of the hearts on Draconic Mons. There's four of them, and then buying an item off of the vendors there. There's five items you would buy per day in total because there is one vendor by the zone entrance. If you were to do this each day, it would take a minimum of 16 separate days of doing all the hearts here. However, you do get an ascended backpack during this process. For the Searing Ascender achievement, just find someone at the end of the jumping puzzle in this zone and teleport to a friend to them. There are often people in the Looking for Group doing this for tips because it's a popular location to park an alt at. For the Heavy Hound Skin Mantle step, it will lead you to believe that you need to do the Flashpoint Mastery to get this item, which involves doing 20 Draconic Mons achievements. I Screw that. You can also get it by doing the Draconic Mons reward track in PvP or World v World a single time. Much faster, in my opinion, unless you just really don't like those game modes. The other items for the Draconic Mons hero can only be done in the way they are listed. Use the wiki for these steps if you get stuck. Bloodstone Fen hero. The Bloodstone crown can be gotten from the Bloodstone Fen reward track in PvP or World v World, or you can do the Out of the Shadows mastery, which involves doing doing 18 achievements. The other items are obtained only as they are listed. Ember Bay Hero, the Dragon Scale Epaulets can be obtained from the Ember Bay Reward Track or from doing the Rising Flames Mastery and its 23 associated achievements. The other items on this list can be obtained in only one way as they are listed. And yes, gosh darn it, you have to do the Chalice of Tears again. It is not retroactive. Bitterfrost Frontier Hero, the first item, the Glacial Gauntlets, can be obtained from the A Crack in the Ice Mastery by doing 21 achievements, which you can see I did not, or by doing the Bitterfrost Frontier Reward Track. One step requires you to do the Gift of Orin achievement. This involves you gathering some items, making an Orin doll, and giving it to baby Orin. You get to keep the Orin mini after doing this, and it is adorable. The other items are obtained only as they are listed. For Lake Doric Hero, the White Mantle Elite Guard Mask can be obtained from doing all 28 achievements for the Head of the Snake Mastery, or by doing the Reward Track for Lake Doric. Norin's Survival Kit is from Norin's Safe Room, which is a mini puzzle all on its own. Link is in the description for that puzzle if you need help getting through it. The Seraph Protector and the Savant Staff are both bought from Heart Merchants in Lake Doric. You have to do the hearts anyway for their own achievements, make sure to buy those items while you're there to complete those steps for a second achievement. Getting both of those done at once means you won't have to come back later. Siren's Landing Hero. Last one. Holy crap. Mersot Brogans can be obtained from doing 36 achievements in the One Path Ends Mastery, or by doing the Siren's Landing Reward Track. For Supporter of the Gods, purchase any one of the awesome transforming backpacks from a heart merchant in Siren's Landing. The other items are gathered as listed and have no shortcuts. When you gather all of these items, you are past the hardest part of finishing Aurora, but there are more steps to do. You will get a Gift of Valor, save that for later, and you will unlock Aurora 2, Empowering. Time for those Zunlai Electrum Ingots I mentioned earlier. You're gonna grab those Ingots and travel to 21 different locations with them. The locations are in the description below if you need it. Once you are done with your long lap around the world, you will get a Spark of Sentience. This part will take significantly less time than anything you've done up to this point. Whew, I wonder how many of you made it this far. Forging time! The first item we need is a Mystic Tribute. Used in many legendary crafts, this is just a mountain of materials that you can save up or buy and then forged together. The second major item is a Gift of Sentience. We need a Gift of the Mist. The Gift of Glory is bought with Shards of Glory. These can be found on the Trading Post. The Gift of War is bought with Memories of Battle. Also on the Trading Post, a Cube of Stabilized Dark Energy, which is crafted. And lastly, a Gift of Battle. You have to do World vs. World for this item. Next, you need 100 Icy Runestones from the Norn with a Monopoly on the market. So this is 100 gold that can't be gotten around. The Gift of Valor from the achievement we did earlier. And a Gift of Energy, which requires a level 400 Artificer on 
on your account. It can be any one of your characters due to the gift of being account bound. Slap together a whole bunch of dust that you either gather or buy to make this. All of those combined makes the gift of sentience. Next is the gift of draconic mastery. You need 250 of each of the six Living World Season 3 currencies. You may have gotten this already without really trying while you were doing all the other stuff. I also recommend daily farming of someone's home instance that has all the nodes. That gets you three of every currency, or nine in the case of the pearls, every day for very minimal effort. Those currencies combined give you the gift of bloodstone magic and the gift of dragon magic. The bloodstone shard is purchased from Miani in Lion's Arch. And one crystalline ingot. This usually means you have to peek into dragon's stand for a crystalline ore. You get a few dozen of it each time you do a meta and open some of the pods. The last item you already have. It is the spark of sentience from the earlier achievements. Throw the four major items into the forge and you've got yourself an Aurora. I can already predict seeing a lot of that's too much work for one item. I have a life in the comments section, so I'll just say that once again, I stress doing this in doses. I found it a lot of fun each day, knocking out one step or two, getting the converter that gets rid of excess bloodstone dust fragments and dragonite ore each day. The ascended backpacks you get along the way. All of the weird cosmetic stuff from the meta achievements. So you get a lot more than just Aurora during this quest. But yeah, it has a lot of steps. On the flip side, the entire thing is soloable, unlike Coalescence, which requires rating, so it's gonna take 10 people. And that's pretty much all of the steps to Aurora. Remember that I have links to all of the steps I glossed over in the description below. Use them if you need more details. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm, comment if you have any questions, or if you know any tricks and tips that I didn't share, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more content. A special thank you to our fantastic Patreon supporters who help make this content possible, and if you are interested in becoming one and getting more videos and perks, there is a link in the description. My in-game name is muckluck.9082 if you need to reach me there or talk to me live any evening on Twitch. You can follow me there or see my schedule on my calendar, link is in the description. Shilling complete! Thanks for listening, and happy achievement hunting.